Today I want to talk about a little game that I'm finishing up a playthrough on and probably will actually replay again called Alpha Protocol. Now this came out on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 back in 2010 and in a lot of ways is a very overlooked hidden gem on both of those consoles. You can pick it up relatively cheap. I paid $3 for it at GameStop. You can find it there. Otherwise you can consistently find copies on eBay under $10, typically around $7. So keep that in mind when taking a look if this is something that you might be interested in playing. Now, Alpha Protocol is a spy RPG, or at least that's the way it describes itself on the front cover. And honestly, I remember seeing the front cover probably back around release in 2010 and thinking that it was some sort of corny robot game. It had the Sega logo on the cover, which at the time, um, with everything Sega was putting out, did not instill much confidence in me thinking it was anything more than a shovelware game. So, of course, I ignored it, and here I played it now 10 years later, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, this is basically a third-person cover-based shooter style game depending on how you want to play it that has some serious deep RPG elements now I think most games if they're a shooter and they include RPG elements these days it's kind of as a way to force in some microtransactions or to gate progression or to put you on this really linear upgrade path that's absolutely not the case with Alpha Protocol. So right off the bat, you create your character um, in terms of their looks and their play style. You put them in a class, so you can go as kind of a run and gun character off the bat. You can go as a stealth character off the bat. Or you could even just do a completely blank character and have no default attributes right off the get-go if you really want to make things be hard on yourself. Now you play as Mike and you're not able to you know, customize his name, you can only customize his appearance um, and that isn't even super deep I felt like, um, but the different customization options do create attribute differences, especially down the road as things get deeper into it. Now every single cutscene in this game you have to be on your toes about. In a lot of shooters the story is so paper thin that you know sometimes I even just skip the cutscenes. You can't do that here because every single cutscene has some sort of dialogue tree in it. Usually a three or four option dialogue tree that affects the way the character you're talking to perceives you and this changes the reputation rating that you have with that character. Now a high reputation rating that they like you is not always the most ideal situation. Sometimes if they like you too much that can negatively affect the way they help you. Um, so sometimes you want to keep it around you know, zero, uh, just a neutral reputation. Um, so that's something to keep in consideration through the playthrough and can have a serious impact impact on how the story goes, the cutscenes you see, and that's why this is a game that I think yields itself very well to multiple playthroughs because there's so many different routes you can take, especially with the way you approach playing through the game. So it puts you into the first city in the first location. Um, I think it's like somewhere in the Middle East is kind of where you start out. And then from there, there's three other cities that you can go to and do the missions there. And as far as I can tell, you can do these in any order that you want. Um, at least that's the impression that I got because it kind of opened up to letting me select which one I wanted to do next. And then in the end, I ended up doing the other two anyways. So it definitely gives you the option to play through the game in the order that you want to play through it. And I think that the different ways you approach which cities you go to and what order affects, again, what cutscenes and what different dialogue trees you get in the other cities. Um, so building these relationships with other characters is very important, not only in the different perks it will give you in terms of your relationship with the character and working with them or working against them, but also in opening up what items you can purchase some of these characters have you know, different supply trees that they get their own military equipment through and because of that you're able to open up access to their supply tree, buy new items if you're at a certain reputation level with them. And as far as I can tell, it doesn't show you what reputation level is required in order to access those supply trees. I'm sure you can find it somewhere online. So I guess so far I've spent a lot of time talking about the mechanics of how the game works in an RPG sense, but again at its core this is a third person shooter with cover based elements, so we obviously have to talk about that. Now I played it on easy, um, so this wasn't overwhelmingly challenging, and I wasn't really playing it for the shooter gameplay aspect of it. Um, the cover system works, I kind of ignored it and I wouldn't just run and gun because I'm not really much of a stealth player. But again, if you picked to play as a stealth um, player in the beginning and you got you know, that kind of skill set from the start, or if you built it up over time through the AP system and just that, that tiered upgrade system and, and approached it that way, you could definitely play this as a stealth game. You could probably finish entire missions um, without ever even using a gun. 
I will say that I found the shooting mechanics in this game to not be particularly tight by modern standards. However, I was playing Saints Row 2 at the same time, and I felt it to be an improvement over Saints Row 2, so maybe it's just kind of par for the course in terms of that time period back in 2010 as far as how a third person shooter handled. I played the majority of this game with submachine guns and assault rifles as well as pistols a bit, but obviously this has your entire fare of different weaponry to pick from, um, including the sniper rifle and of course a bunch of different kinds of gadgets because you're a spy after all. Um, and I didn't really use a lot of these gadgets, particularly because I was reliant on finding them because I wasn't really interested in purchasing them. So you can purchase them um, just like you can purchase any sort of upgradable item or attachment for your weapons. But when it comes to you know these different gadgets, they're single use obviously. So I didn't really pay much attention to purchasing and replenishing them before every mission. You know, But if you're a more serious spy person, particularly if you wanna play in a stealth approach, um, that's the way I think you'd wanna do it. You wanna be purchasing those before every single mission. And lastly, I wanna talk about the different hacking mini games, which I believe there are three or even four different situations. You, know, you can be anything from trying to draw a line to matching up characters on a screen, um, just different things like that, or a lock picking mini game, which for whatever reason it seemed like I didn't see very often after the first or second mission, so maybe that one was very world specific. Um, but there's a lot of these different hacking mini games that I think are relatively fun to actually play, and while playing on easy, I didn't find any of them to be overbearingly difficult in terms of you know me struggling with them and, and it hindering my progression as I know sometimes mini games can be quite an annoying uh, determinant from the regular gameplay um, but if you do fail the hacking mini game what it does is it basically sets off an alarm and then you have the ability to try it again though at that time you're probably being shot in the back so probably not an ideal time until you clear out the reinforcements to try and to try and actually complete the mini game again but Alpha Protocol is a game that I really enjoyed and I think opens it up to such a wide array of playing approaches and I think that if you had two people that played this game I think their experiences would be very different just because from the way I've seen different videos on YouTube people reviewing it and my gameplay just seems like there's a wealth of content here that goes unused on each individual playthrough depending on how you approach the game and depending on how you choose different options in those dialogue trees. And especially for the low price this game is going at right now and, and has been for the last few years, if you can find it at GameStop for three bucks or simply pick it up on eBay for like seven, I don't think you can go wrong with Alpha Protocol. I think you'll have a fantastic time if you're into RPGs and if you don't, you even have a mild interest in third person shooters because it's an okay third person shooter. But if I was just hated RPGs and I was only into third person shooters, I'd pass on it. But if you're an RPG fan and you like third person shooters, this one is absolutely for you and I don't think you can go wrong with this hidden gem. Thank you guys for watching, I'm Bailey and I'll see you in the next video.